Okay, so this is the tray. Yeah, this and then is this good. thing can house hundred. Hundred of them. Yes, sir. Okay. So with that hundred, what that means is per the unit measurements, you are expecting one point four to one point eight tons of the fresh larvae. This alone can produce one point four to one point eight tons. Fish farmers. <laughs> for you to be able to save 4,000 Ghana cities on feed, I'm telling you that this is one of the most interesting news you can ever hear. Human beings actually eat it for as a normal diet, and I can tell you it tastes like granite. It tastes like granite. Yes, sir. So, in our quest to find better ways of being able to farm our fish. We are currently in a farm where they farm black soldier fly larvae. And we as fish farmers, we are always looking for alternative source of income and other things that can help us to decrease our source of production. I am here with a fine gentleman. Your name please. My name is Luther Jessikwashi. Alright, so Luther, where are we? Okay, so this is Agri Makeup. Um, um, an animal nutrition startup okay. that is focused on using natural alternatives um, to produce quality yet affordable feed. Uh, we all know feed has become a very big challenge it's a, it's a and that's challenge. one of the problem, problems we want to solve. So that is why we exist. All right. yeah. So where are we? What's the name of the town? So this is Nankese in the eastern region, um, a town in between Suhum and Kufuidua. Okay. And uh, what do you do here? So this is our black soldier fly production facility where we are producing and um, we are using um, natural systems to um, create a natural habitat for the black soldier fly to produce it in large quantities. Now the black soldier fly larvae is um, a protein alternative okay. with nutrition that is comparable to that of soya bean and it's a natural replacement for um, soya bean and fish meal in feed, feed production. Okay. So, in short, you're just trying to say that you are producing some flies which we can use them as an um, alternative source of feed for our fish. Awesome. That is what we are doing here. Right. Producing larvae that's from the flies. That's very powerful protein as replacement in right. feed. So um, how long have you had this business? How long has this farm been in place? We started operations earlier this year. Earlier this year? Yes. 2022? Yes, okay. just 2022. All right. And um, since you started, um, what has been the development in the place so far? Um, since you started trying to run your production, how many larvae are you able to produce and to what quantities? What are some of these figures that you can give to us so that we would know whether this is actually something that is uh, sustainable enough for us? We are going to take you through a walkthrough where you are going to see how the production is done. You'll be able to tell for the numbers yourself and be able to tell how productive and efficient this system is. No so right. for the numbers, I'm going to give it to you when we are going through practically. All right. for you to appreciate All right. the details. Alright, so just make sure that you follow us throughout the entire process so that you as fish farmers who are looking for alternative sources of income, alternative sources of feed for your fish, you can also sit down in your house and then see if this will be good enough for you. Because I am here to learn and I know that you would also by the end of this episode will also pick up something. They are here to give you all the details that you need. So let's get going and see what you have over here. All right, so thank you very much, Manuel. Hi. Um, so I want you to describe your structure for us. What mm -hmm. kind of structure do you have over here? All right, so we first have our anteroom. So we want that we essentially do our changing over here because essentially we don't want to expose ourselves to the filth that we bring in. Okay. So we change here, wear our gloves and our crocs and boots out here. Then in our first section of this space is basically our insectarium where we keep the adult insects for egg production. Now essentially in this room we have the system such that we have uh, currently we have eight insectaria for the adult fly but four are in operation of which two are currently stocked even though they are halfway stocked. Now what happens in the average insectarium is that we would have the adult fly 
with the insect bait and then the, um, the eggy, which is supposed to essentially be the point at which the insect is able to lay the eggs. Wait, 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 I'm lost. Okay, sorry, so you sorry. Said, you said you have, um, so this is where you keep the insects? The adults. Oh, okay, I can see some of them. Yes, please. These yeah. are half stock. Most of them have passed away. They have basically a week, a week long um, shelf life, more or less. Okay. They are just born to raise babies. Okay. So what happens is, in the adult stage, we place an insect bait, which is mostly made of fermented um, fruit waste and then pig manure. Which okay. smells to the high heavens. Okay. Which attracts them and then they lay eggs in there. In, inside. So, so, do you do that in this? Yes, please. So, this is where you have. This is uh, where we have the waste, but it's even dried out. All right, all right. So, so, so you to, put those things over yes, here. Sir. And then these insects will not come attracted in, to it. Yes, sir. And then lay their eggs inside. Exactly. Okay. So, once the, the egg laying has been successfully done, we wait for five days for the eggs to hatch. Okay. Sometimes it can even be less when the conditions are right. Sometimes even one day. It's really. No. But once that happens, you have to be observant, otherwise you miss the timing. So once that they've, they've, ha let's say they've hatched the egg, we would wait for another four to five days for them to be in a position where we can visualize them. Okay. Once we visualize them, we take the identity and then we use it in the next area, which is right. our bio, bio conversion. Right. Isn't this a... Uh, oh, this is common mosquito nets actually. But okay. what we did is we washed it, I think we washed it ten times. Right. Just to get rid of the insecticide. Once we tried, we lost all of our insects. Okay. And some lessons are learned the hard way, I think. All right. And um, what do you have over here? What so is this, this are uh, just a foam for humidification. All so right. at AgriMakeup, we believe that everything has to be sourced locally to make it actually affordable. All right. Made in Ghana. Made in Ghana. Everything. Right. This guy. This was made in Nanka. See here, now. There's a metal right. so there for us. There's a metal. Yes. And then there's, there's a this regular. one. This one was made by a lady in circle. Right. So everything is local. Nothing right. is like. Your coffee, if you are born, so by yeah. now the humidifier is such that the insects don't eat at the adults, they only lay eggs, but they need the water to have a long that longevity. All right. Without the water, it can take three days and they will be dying. All right. But the water, it can have a week, sometimes even two weeks if you are lucky. All right, so they, they, they only last in this thing for it's a week, a week, yes, sir. and then after that, they die. Yeah, we just clear. So out. the ones that are dead, I can see that they are lot over yes. here. So, um, what can we use them for? Yes. So, because they are insects, they have chitin as their exoskeleton, which is also rich in calcium. Rich in calcium? Yes, sir. All right. So, you can actually, if you have some issues with calcium deficiency, deficiency in your fish, you can actually, yeah, you can actually macerate them and add it as an addition to the, to the feed. To oh, okay. Combat oh, okay. that. Okay, okay. Even what we've been using recently, because we've been having some issues with our fish ponds, we've actually been experimenting with the pigs and them as well. Okay. So, we've been able to actually added to the soil and it's, we've seen some improvements with calcium com com uh, composition. You, the good news for us is to we have some connections with the university so we've been testing these things. A lot of these go. things so you take advantage. I, I, even with the last month farms, we also have a connection with some yeah. of the investors. Of course, well. so we have to keep on running Charlie, test. Measure so, twice so it means twice. that at the end of the day, um, you get larvae mm -hmm. and then you can also get um, the, some, yeah, some other composition. In fact, there's this other people that have been using the calcium actually for water filtration. Well, okay. Because okay. the calcium can do something known as ion exchange. Yeah. You can use yeah. it to get rid of the hardness of the water. Yeah. Yeah. So yeah. that's something a bit, I won't say futuristic, but currently we are just focused on the feed. In 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 aquaponics farming, there are times where you lose some nutrients, mm -hmm. and so some of these nutrients sometimes it can be magnesium, it can be calcium, mm -hmm. because you are running a system where you have some plants mm -hmm. in there as well. Mm -hmm. Yeah. And so depending on how frequent you run your test. You could also realize that maybe you need some calcium. Yeah. And then maybe we'll try and see if this yeah. could be yeah, feasible. Yeah, it could be a good addition for, to it. For, for that. So we have one, two, three, four. Yes, sir. With and only four in operation. Two being stocked at the moment. All two right. stocked at the moment. All right. Okay. So welcome to our bioconversion stroke harvest arena. Okay. Essentially, what happens here is we do put the waste conversion where we have the pig waste and then we add the, the larvae, the five year old larvae. And then from there we harvest here and then we also process the bio waste for currently for use on our farm. Okay, so you pick the larvae from this section. This section. And then, and then you bring, bring them, them over here, here and, and then you give them to the waste. To the waste. More or less. I think I should say it this way. We inoculate the waste. Mm, the, the, the reason we say inoculation is that the waste is like food for them. Yeah. And once you place them there, they eat it to bulk up. 
Okay. So sometimes they can buckle from, I think, let's say a centimeter in length to roughly two centimeters. Okay. Roughly. So in this particular place, when you say waste, mm -hmm. you've, you've mentioned the pig waste. What other kind of waste again can these animals Must consume? Consume oh, sure, these sure. insects. So the good news is any organic waste. In fact, any organic any from human waste, vegetable waste, uh, malt, uh, beer's waste. All right. Food waste, uh, any waste. Any so far, it's organic. You don't have a problem. Okay, okay. The only thing is that there might be fluctuations in their output. For example, pig waste is better than brewer's waste. Okay. Or food waste is better than pig waste. Okay. So the one that's available to you would actually modify your protocols a bit. But any organic waste. In fact, in Denmark, they use it for municipal waste management. Yes. Human, yes, that's human what I was going to talk about. Because um, uh, we, we provide different different kinds of waste in our homes mm -hmm. and uh, some of us uh, maybe some of our tomatoes or whatever it yes, is yes. and then we discard them and so if you have a small setup setup in your home you can easily use this to yes work on your waste yeah. and then all right convert all right. it okay. i think the good news too is that this insect is actually universally distributed in west africa no, okay. so if you want to get it from the wild it's super easy just put a piece of stinking material in some shaded corner. Wait for a week or two. When you come, you see this larvae there. Wow. That's it. It's like, the funny thing is, you, the attention is now growing. No. Previously, we were just looking at house lights and vermicomposting. But this guy, I can promise you, does a very good job of producing compost. All right. So, um, the lady sitting over here. Um, so, what is she doing now? So, essentially, this is Judith and she's our, our, our she's in charge of harvesting currently okay. and what she usually does is that she because we've not mechanized yet she has to um, increase the concentration of the larvae by okay. removing some of the waste so you see that there's removed some sections of it then after that we apply the sieving so that they have the natural tendency to go out of sunlight okay. so once the sun shines on them they would want to cross through the nets which we then can collect and then process by washing and subsequently um, frying it on the fire okay 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 so you have to so later we wash them and then all right now yes, i can see that we have uh, these guys over here mm -hmm. we have these guys who look um, um, more white mm -hmm. and some two looking black and then some two looking black what is mm -hmm. happening over here so the life stages is such that it proceeds from the adult sorry from the larvae to the adult in 41 days 41 good days yes okay but the window within which we can harvest is roughly from day 5 to day 14 okay. sorry day 19. All right. now within that period then when they are ready for harvest they have this beige creamish look which you see here so this guy is yeah but the synchronicity of the thing can be a bit challenging so you see some of them have advanced looking black they are yeah. closer to adulthood okay they are known as pre pupae okay if you give them another day or two they'll pupate and if you give them a week you get your adults they'll become the flies yes sir okay so now so it means that these guys too they were somewhere they were here. here they were here actually for how many days for 14 days okay so from here they come here yeah they spent 14 days yes sir and then we get this this yes sir. and then this and then that the as well yes sir and then the compost and then the compost as well so good now it means that um, i can see that aside these animals working on your waste you have compost mm -hmm. and then you have insects yes sir and then you now have adult um, insects as well yes sir and so based on these three things these these ones are looking darker darker ready for adult use and because they are they are darker they they would be the ones that would just become become the adults the, the adults yes sir okay okay so um my viewers and i we are here because a lot of us are fish farmers and some of us are trying to do integrated farming among other things as well mm -hmm. now we want to understand how easy will it be for us to have something like this mm -hmm. in our homes and to what extent does something like this save our cost okay because okay. currently the prices of fish feed keeps on Sorry. going up as a result of uh, inflation and so in this small place in a in a, in a space like this mm. to oh. what extent can we as fish farmers actually benefit okay 
So I think what I can start with is to do a bit of unit matrices. Okay. So currently what we have is basically everything is locally sourced. Obviously jerry cans, you don't need to go up or to get them. Exactly. And then we just cut them. But for every can, we are able to get roughly from 1.4 kilos to 1.8 kilos of the larvae. Wait. For every one of this. Yes, sir. We are able to get 1.4 to 1.8 kilos, 1 kilos, kilos of, of fresh larvae. These larvae. Yes, sir. Okay. Now, what that means for us is that once we process, we wash, and then we dry, the moisture reduces, so that will be roughly half of that, so from 700 to 800 grams. Okay. So, currently our shelves can house up to 100 of the um, of the trees. Alright, so this is the tree. Yeah. This and then this thing can house 100, 100 of them. Yes, sir. Okay. So, with that 100, what that means is per the unit measurement, you are expecting 1.4 to 1.8 tons of the fresh larvae. This alone can produce 1.4 to 1.8 tons yes, sir. of larvae. Yes, please. Oh my God. Hey, what, what's the measurement? This is a small space. Yes, so the, what we did was we wanted to optimize the space because, of course, space is of the essence and we believe in vertical farming. So what we did was we measured the dimensions of the jerry cans, took an average of it, and then hoped, made it such that we could shelf 10 across a stretch. All right. And then we could right. shelf 10 down. Okay. So, I'm, I don't have the matrices off head, but if you are able to do it that way, then you'd be able to fit like roughly 15 of these in, let's say, 25 feet of, of uh, floor space. Okay. So, let's say I am producing 1.4 tons of uh, larvae. Mm -hmm. Now, I know that uh, with our fish feed, we need some amount of protein mm -hmm. and then among other things, carbohydrates, yes, the sir. maize and then the rest. Now, catfish, we use animal protein and then plant-based protein. Most of the farmers who are trying to produce their own feed, a lot of the farmers are now looking at that. Mm. They need some fish meal and then they need this uh, plant-based protein, mm -hmm. which a lot of the farmers are now looking at um, the soya beans. Mm -hmm. and so some of the farmers are now getting acres of land Mm. and then they are trying to farm their own mm, soya, bean. soya beans and wh whatever it is but only the soya bean is not enough mm -hmm. for mm. us to have a good, good. or complete good feed. feed yes sir you would need the fish element as well yes sir and so if um we are looking at a 20 kg bag mm -hmm. one bag of feed we buy it's 20 kg mm -hmm. now you are saying that we are producing this amount of um, um, fresh larvae fresh larvae in this small space what are some of the advantages you can point mm. out to us over here in terms of the plant mm. the animal and is this then complete and can it yes, sir. all right so the advantages are threefold the first one i'll start is with the spacing so here right now with this area alone has a, a length of 25 feet versus um, 11 feet 25 by 11 yes sir. and we are able to house um, so far we would be adding more but we did decide that we'll be able to house 15 of these now what that means is if you are going to spare the whole land for the soya bean production you are going to actually waste or lose out if you could have done something similar this would have required less space and i could have freed more land for other activities yeah. that do not have to be fed into the fish production okay so you could actually get more value for your parcel of land then the next one too has to do with the nutritional quality the reason why you have to add the fish meal is because of the amino acid composition. All right. Within the soya bean, there are some ones that are missing, like cysteine and methionine, which has to be made up for with the fish meal. But this being an animal protein has that, as well as has the protein, the protein volume that we need in the soya bean. Okay, so you are trying to say that if you have these larvae, you don't need the fish and, and the, the plant. Bean. Yes, sir. Okay. In fact, recently we once one of our tests showed that when we dry the larvae, it can constitute up to 40 to 56 percent of raw protein. Okay, so if we are producing our fish feed, those of us who produce our own fish feed, we know that we need about let's say 40 percent of protein for our feed. Mm -hmm. It means that these insects can provide us everything you need with all the protein requirements that we need. Yes, sir. Wow, this is amazing. This is from literature. I'm not even saying this from my head. <laughs> it's from literature. You can easily search up literature showing the nutritional composition of the black soldier fly on different types of substrates. And you see that consistently, 
it is able to pre-supply these amino acids that are required. All right, so let's do the math here. Now, for us to be able to produce a 20 kg bag of feed, when you're looking at the component of uh, plant-based protein and then the fish meal, you are spending about 120 Ghana cities for this particular yes, protein. Sir. How much do we spend for BSF? Just 40 Ghana cities. So it means that 40 Ghana cities is equivalent to the 120 Ghana cities that you are going to spend for these two things. So if you are farming, uh, let's say you are farming 1,000 pieces of fish mm -hmm. and you need 50 bags of feed, then if you are using the other means, the older mm -hmm. means, that, that will be... The 50 times the, 50 times the 40 for the black soldier no 50 times the 120 for the original original and we are looking at 6,000 Ghana cities yes sir which means that if you are using black soldier flower you're looking at 2,000 Ghana, 2, Ghana cities yes, so it saves 4, you 4,000 Ghana cities mm -hmm. just for 50 bucks just for 50 bucks fish farmers <laughs> for you to be able to save 4,000 Ghana cities on feed I'm telling you that this is one of the most interesting news you can ever hear and what are other advantages of this bss so we are talking about the good news is after the production of the protein you get ready to use compost now this ready to use compost on the market has also gone up so aside getting the value of saving your production cost you also get another stream of income by actually sell selling out this compost so what can this compost be used for oh for potting material nursery material and even on the use on the field for now because of the war in ukraine and russia First, like that's also spiked, not to mention about the dollar and all its problems. Yes. So when you're able to get this readily made within the country, it makes it rather cheaper and more economic to use on your farm. Aside from that, it also improves the soil quality. Because okay. of the large volume of the organic material, you have earthworms coming into your soil, which actually aerates it and makes your plants grow bigger. Yeah. In fact, if you cast a glance around, it's really like there's a lot of greenery here. Some of the compost that we've been producing, we've been actually spreading around to actually fertilize for which we actually consume. Okay. And the good news for us is we see the effect ourselves. All right. So there's value for the compost that you produce as well as the protein that you are getting. So okay. it's a, a lot of value for And then money. the older fish you can use for calcium. For yes, the older insects, you can actually amend your feed to provide the calcium that is required. In fact, when the insect actually emerges to adult, it also reduces, produces a husk. That is also rich in calcium that you can also even amend your feed with. So if I want, let's say, a system, mm -hmm. a small system in place in my house, mm -hmm. if I call you guys, oh, we'll be ready to help. You'll be ready to help. Most definitely. So viewers, if you think you are interested in BSF production, these guys will be available to assist you, have a nice setup at your place, and then you can also use that for your poultry, for, for your fish, your poultry, your pigs, your pets. It means almost everything. It's just that, in fact, in some countries actually, human beings actually eat it for as a normal diet. And I can tell you, it tastes like granite. It tastes like granite. Yes, sir. Oh, I, 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 <laughs> I don't know if I have the ability to, to, to try it out. But then, I think this has been an eye-opening session. And thank you so much for your time. Thank you for coming. I think I would also want to have a system like this in my farm. And I also run my own test with them. And then I'll give you my feedback. Sure. Thank you very much, Emmanuel. Sorry, sorry, thank sorry, you, sorry, thank sorry. You, thank, <laughs> you, thank you, thank you, thank you. <laughs> thank I'll you. see you some other time. Yes, sir. Thank you.